morning, welcome to the month of May. First Chronicles 12, 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times or the seasons, if you want, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. I speak this morning, or this afternoon now, on a new season a new season without a doubt we just stepped into a new season a new month a new season and as we proceed on there are a couple of things i want you to understand about seasons or generally number one god is a God of times and seasons. Times and seasons are important to God. They are. In Genesis chapter 1 and in verse 14, the Bible said, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days, and for years. As far back as Genesis, God was mindful of seasons. To a point where he demarcated things for the, on the basis of seasons. So God is a God of times and seasons. Dash, times and seasons are important to God. Very important. Secondly, seasons have purpose and purposes have seasons. Seasons have purpose and purposes have season. Do you understand that? There is a purpose for the rainy season, to rain the rain. So that the crop can grow. There is a purpose for the dry season. To prepare to make the, the earth to recover and recuperate against the, the planting season. There is a purpose. God is a God of times and seasons. And now seasons have purpose. And purposes have season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible said Ecclesiastes 3 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Seasons have purpose. Purposes have season. If you want to join the military, there is a season for it. If you are interested in joining the army at the age of 60, you are interested too late. If you are interested in playing sports at the age of 55, that interest came too late. There is a season for it. Seasons have purpose and purposes have season. Three, Seasons bring changes. Different seasons equal different changes. Very important. Very important. You, you, you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, all the way up to verse 11, you'll see that. They bring changes. When the rainy season comes, it comes with its changes. When the dry season comes, it comes with the changes. When the winter comes, or the summer, or the fall, of the spring, whichever. They come with their changes. Fourthly, understanding of seasons puts people in command of the season. Of the season and of situations. Of seasons and situations. Understanding of seasons put people in command of seasons and situations. The sons of Issachar, where we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 32, they had understanding of seasons. 
First Chronicles 12, 32. They had the understanding of seasons and their brethren were at their command. So when you understand season, you are in command. In command of the season. In command of situations. And even in command of others who have a lesser understanding of the season. That was what happened to the sons of Issachar. Their brethren were at their commandment. Fifthly, understanding brings expectation. An expectation bets manifestation. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 2, Daniel understood the times, understood the season. Daniel chapter 1 verse, verse, verse 2, 2 and 3. He understood the time and the season where the captivity of Judah was to end. And by that understanding, it betted in him an expectation that made him to put forth the appropriate action that brought manifestation. Understanding bets expectation. An expectation brings manifestation. Expectation also brings experience. If, for example, you have some idea of the season you are in and you want to take that season seriously, you will see the manifestation. Number six, what you call anything determine its response. What you call a thing determines what it will answer. That's right. What you call anything determines its response. What you call a thing determines what it will answer. In Genesis chapter 2 and in verse 19, the Bible said concerning Adam, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Hallelujah. That was the name thereof. That was the name thereof. So, if for example, you understand some things about the month we are in, and you will call it accordingly, you can expect it. Why do we declare years? We declare years so they can answer. Both by prophetic insight and by the, and by the, the law of decrees and results. You declare it and see it. So, Step into a season and say, this, my, this season I must see freedom because I sense that there is liberty in the air. It's my season of liberty. Then you see the liberty. You begin to see. Finally, number seven. There is a connection between times, numbers, and seasons. There is a connection between times, numbers, and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Let me give you an example. In Africa, in our own place in Nigeria here, when you begin to approach the end of March, which is the third month, you are thinking of approaching the end of the dry season. And so the rainy season at times starts earlier. But when you ap approach between the third and the fourth month, that is time, and also with number, number three, number four, third and fourth month, you know you are approaching a rainy season. And then you are from that fourth month, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine. By the time you are Approaching the ninth month, whatever may, as you step into the tenth month, you are realizing that you are beginning to enter the dry season. So there is that connection between time and number and season. Am I communicating? Are you understanding? We are in a time now. It is called May. It is the fifth month. And the number is five. 
Now, the number five is very is a very significant number in scripture. If you know the range of its significance, it may influence your expectation in the fifth month. And I am led by the Spirit of God to delve into this number five for this particular month. So that we don't enter this month carelessly, it's very loaded. What are the various connections to the number five in scripture? There are so many, but I'm going to look at about ten of them maybe. And then look at two others that is not necessarily from scripture, but from just experience. Number one, the number five is connected to grace. There are five gifts of grace, or five engracements. In, in, in the, that we call the ministry gift in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. There are five of them. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. These are the pillar graces for the church of Christ. There are supportive giftings but this particular so the, that number five is representative, is connected to grace. So stepping into this fifth month, if you have that understanding, you can, you can make demands on grace. Father, graces I have not experienced, I trust you for it this fifth month. Number two, the number five is connected to mercy. If you remember the pool of Bethesda, the word Bethesda is the word mercy. Bethesda means house of mercy. In John chapter 5 verse 1 to 5, and that pool has five porches. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and, G and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. Read on. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind halt without waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at the settings. Now we can, we, can, we can stop there. This messy pool has five outlets, five porches, five containers, five collections. It's called the pool of mercy. At that mercy, people got healed. In this fifth month, which is the number five, you can make demands on mercy by this principle. Number three, the number five is connected to victory. David, when he was confronted with Goliath, the Bible says he chose five stones, five smooth stones from the brook. One of those stones brought down Goliath. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40, he chose five smooth, smooth, smooth stones. And he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his crib. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. Long story made short, he slew Goliath with one of the stones. And if you, if you, under, if you read the Bible very well, there were other four giants that came later on. <laughs> All right? We'll not get into that now. But he had five stones. He confronted five giants. He killed Goliath with one. So that number five is connected to victory. And you can trust God and we can trust God and, and make demands on this same principle that in this fifth month, the Goliath must fall. Whatever that Goliath is for your life, for your family, for your state, for your nation, for our generation, it must fall. It's the number is connected to victory in scripture. Fourthly, the number five is connected to purification. In the temple, in the Old Testament, there is what they call the lava, a container, the basin, that the priest would wash their hands inside before they go to offer sacrifices to cleanse, for ceremonial cleansing. There were five of them on the left hand and five of them on the right hand as 
they enter the temple. Second Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 6. Five, five, five. He made also ten lovers and put five on the right hand and five on the left to wash in them. Such things as they offered for the burnt offering, they washed in them, but the sea was for the priest to wash in. Five lovers for washing, for purification, for cleansing. This fifth month, demands can be made for everything that is not clean in your life. Everything that is not pure in your life to be cleansed, that, that addiction to be broken, that, 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 that negative lifestyle to be arrested. The, fifth, the number five. Fifthly, the number five is connected to illumination and revelation. It's connected. In the same temple, there was a golden lampstand inside the temple. And inside the Holy of Holies as it were. In 2 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 7, it has. And he made ten candlesticks of gold according to their form and set them in the temple. Five on the right hand and five on on the left. These candlesticks carried light, illumination, revelation. This can be your month of striking revelations if you understand the connection of this fifth month. It can be your month of striking revelation, striking light insight. The fifth month from revelations of scripture, revelations of God, revelations in diverse ways. The fifth month for me was a month where the vision of this ministry was delivered. It was the same month for God's servant, Bishop David Uyiriko. The fifth month. Number six, the number five is connected to strength and health. Now, the table of shoe bread. Second Chronicles chapter 4 verse 8. Was he made also ten tables and placed them in the temple? Five on the right side. You see, you are seeing five, 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 five. Five on the right side, five on the left. And he made a hundred basins of gold, five on the left. This table of shoe bread carried the bread of his presence, what is called the bread of his presence. And like you know in scripture, the Bible says that healing is the bread of the children. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Bread equals strength. Matthew 4, 4. Mark 7, 27. So if you are weak and sickly in your body, this can be your month of strength and be your month of health. The fifth month. Fifth month. Number five. Seven. The number five is connected to supernatural supply. The loaf that Jesus broke was five. Five loaves aside from two fishes. And he broke the five loaves for 5,000 people. 5,000 men beside women and children. Five, five. In Matthew chapter 14 verse 17, you look at that. and um, Five loaves. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. And then in, and in, all the way in verse, and he said, bring them to me. And then in verse 21, you saw how he, he, he fed the people. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. You know how men can eat. So they had to focus on the number of the men. Five, five. Supernatural supplies. So this fifth month can be the month of supplies that will amaze you. That will bamboozle you. Supplies, supplies that will exceed expectation. From the realm of not enough to the realm of more than enough. From the realm of never enough to the realm of far more than enough. Supernatural supplies. Number eight. The number five is connected to talents and gifts. I mentioned it already. Where the five gifts of the, of, of, of the spirit Five ministry gifts, we talked about it in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. But you understand that when Jesus Christ was giving the parable of the talent, he started with five. In Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 and to verse 28, Matthew chapter 25, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. 
And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away he took his journey. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. He became ten. Now, he began with the five. This month can be your month of gift explosion. Can be your month of potential explosion. Father, I am in the fifth month. And I connect prophetically with the implication of the number five to connect what this month has for me. Number nine, the number five is connected to spiritual altar. Altar. The altar that Moses made in the tabernacle in the wilderness, in Exodus chapter 27, verse 5, verse 1, it was five cubits, and thou shalt make an altar of shitting wood, five cubits long, five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square. The height thereof shall be three, three cubits. This is it. It is a square altar, and it is five cubic Place it again. Five cubits square altar. Five, five. In Exodus 38 verse 1, that was repeated again. Exodus 38 verse 1. And he made the altar of burnt offerings of shitting wood. Five cubits was the length thereof. Five cubits was the breadth. That's altar. This month can be your month where your prayer altar will shift level. Dr. Miss Enenche was talking at the beginning and she, she gave a hint on that without me telling her. It's, it's, it, it can be the month where your prayer altar changes level. Where your fire moves to another dimension. Where your sacrifices move to another dimension. Where your offerings move to another dimension. It's connected to the spiritual altar. Number 10 the number five is connected to the cherubims in the temple. The cherubims in the temple. When I read it, I was amazed. They had wings that were five cubits long each. First Kings chapter 6 verse 24. See number five, 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 all the way. And five cubits was the one wing of the cherub. And five cubits, the other wing of the cherub, from the uttermost part of the one wing unto the uttermost part of the other wing, ten cubits. And the other cherub was ten cubits. Both cherubims were of one measure and one size. Now, if you go to Second Chronicles chapter three, verse eleven to verse twelve, you will see again. And the wings of the cherubims were twenty cubits long. Now, how is that? One wing of the cherub was five cubits reaching to the wall. That's five to the wall. And then the other wing was five cubits reaching to the wing of the other cherub. And then the other cherub has his own five wings, five cubits wing from the other side to meet this one. And then from the second wing to the wall was another five cubits. That's five, 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 five in four places. That's 20 cubits. That was the wing. And I think that the wing signifies flying. It signifies assignment. So this month can be for you the month of angelic assignment. The month of angelic ministry. The month where drastic activity, swift move of the angels like we have never seen before. There are more, but those are the 10 I'll, I'll, I'll take out of scripture. Now number 11, the number 5 is connected to sensitivity and perception. Based on the fact that the man is made up of 5 senses. 5. The sense of sight. The sense of hearing, the sense of smell, the sense of taste, and touch plus feeling. Five senses. We are in the fifth month, and God gave us five senses. And we trust God that in this fifth month, we should see what we didn't see before, hear what we didn't hear before, know what we didn't know before, understand what we haven't understood before. Now, this is important because this season must not pass. Like I told you, it's a loaded, 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 loaded season. Very loaded. Our destiny convention holds in the fifth month. Very loaded month. And 12, the number five is connected to possession. 
you take hold with your hand that is made of five fingers. Hallelujah! <laughs> you step out with your feet and step into your possession with legs made of five toes each. It's, 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 it's possession, possession, possession. He said, wheresoever the sole of your feet shall tread upon, I have given it to you as your possession. And so get said, because this, this month you shall possess your possession. You shall take what is yours. You shall step into what is yours and what is yours shall enter into your hands. Say amen. So, with this understanding and mentality, what do you expect in this fifth month? Grace, unusual grace, mercy, unusual mercy that prevents you from enemy destruction. What do you expect? Victory over every Goliath. What do you expect? Cleansing. What do you expect? Illumination, revelation. What do you expect? Strength and health. What do you expect? Supernatural supplies. What do you expect? An explosion of giftings and talents. What do you expect? Fire, fresh fire on the altar. What do you expect? angelic activity and ministry what do you expect expect higher realms of sensitivity and perception what do we expect possessing of our possession how do you maximize your seasons number one have a clear understanding of the season you are in a clear understanding there is a reason why God is preaching to us in this way. I have been preaching in Dunamis Church for 22 to 23 years. 23 years, going to 24 years in November this year. And I was preaching before that time. Before I started preaching in Dunamis, I was preaching. I have not preached a thing like this before. Pull the things together like this. No, not once before. Not in the dream. Now, I'm saying that because God says things and does things for, his, for reasons. And there is a reason why you are hearing what you are hearing now. So there must be the clear understanding of the season you are in. In Luke chapter 19, verse 41 to 44. Luke 19, verse 41 to verse 44. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Saying, if you had known even you, at least in this your day, the things which belong to your peace, but now they are hid from your eyes. For the day shall come upon you that your enemy shall cast a trench about you and compass you about and keep you on every side, God forbid. He said, and they shall lay you with the ground and your children within thee, and they shall not leave you one stone upon another. Why? Because you don't know the time of your visitation. When people don't know their season, they end in prison. Understand your season. Not just this one. Any season at all. Have an understanding of where you are per time and what God intends to do with your life. Number two, pray expected changes into manifestation. Pray expected changes of the season into manifestation. If there are things you know the season brings for you, or if there are things that you expect God to do for you in a season, pray them into manifestation. Of all the points mentioned uh, today, there may be some of you that are more critical to your life and to your destiny at this time. Pray them into manifestation. I connect with the mystery of the number five in this fifth month to pray this into manifestation, to pray that into manifestation, to pray this into manifestation. That was what Daniel did in Daniel chapter 9 in verse 1 all the way to verse 3. Daniel chapter 9 verse 1. And in the first year of Darius the king, the son of Ahasuerus of the seed of the Medes which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign I Daniel understood by books. He understood the season he was seen and then in verse 3 he positioned himself he set his face to seek by prayer. So you, you, you understand the season you pray expected changes. The changes you are expecting, pray them into manifestation. And finally, number three, embark on appropriate actions for the season. 
if you are expecting, if you believe you are in a season of revival, then you know that the appropriate action is aggressive intercession, aggressive praying. You know that they, 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 they you know. So you embark on appropriate actions for the season. For example, a season of harvest requires work. It requires you go to the harvest field and bring in the harvest. That was what the Bible said in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 5. It said, Proverbs 10, 5, sorry. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. Because harvest season is work season, not sleeping season. It's not sleeping season. You understand the season, you put forth appropriate actions for the season. And then you see the results. Welcome to your season of destiny. Destiny opening. Season of possessing your possession. Season of seeing drastic results. If you were seated where you are, you will now stand up. And then we shall pray. Lift your voice and begin to appreciate God for what you have received so far.